Now, a lot of you are wondering, like, you know, why, why is that I don't work and I don't have a job? Quite honestly, after 9-11, there was a series of events that just happened, like the, the, the actual tragedy, and then also what happened afterwards, like the way, like, my job treated me, and then the way my girlfriend treated me, the way after my job treated me in a certain way, and the way my friends treated me the way after my girlfriend treated me in a certain way. So this chain of events caused this very traumatic syndrome a PTSD syndrome that caused a lot of anxiety with me. And I, I was still working even though you know, I got laid off and I got another job, I found another job and, and I was kind of cruising along, And but things weren't right. I mean, I was seeing a doctor, one doctor I was seeing three times a week and another doctor I was seeing once a week at the same time, so that's, that's four times a week I was going to a doctor and they had me on medications as well as therapy because I was not doing well, I was depressed. And this was around 2003. I had to quit working because I was very traumatized by the airplane. I had a very difficult time getting on an airplane. In fact, I had a job interview with a company called Medevante. And Medevante was in Minneapolis and I was in New York City. And I had a car lined up, I had everything you know, planned like I normally do. And I was supposed to be picked up at 5 a.m. and the car was outside and I canceled the car. And I canceled reservation and they called me and what, what happened? Where are you? And I just, I, just, I just couldn't make it. And the fact is, I just could not get on that airplane. A lot of times when I see airplanes flying, I, I think they're going to hit a building, you know? I mean, it was very traumatized, so I couldn't fly anymore. Not the way I used to anyways, but this the anxiety like of, of an interview and everything, it was just too much. So, so uh, I quit working. I left Manhattan and I moved back to my parents' house in Westland, Oregon. And then I started, I learned to bartend, and I got a couple of jobs bartending, something really low stress. And I moved to Aspen, Colorado, and I lived there for, for a season. I really liked it. I really liked it. It was very, very easy. It was just, but it was just very boring in a sense. Once you kind of, and at first it was very, very exciting because it was hard. I sucked at it. You know, I mean, everybody else was really good at it. So I'd practice, 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 and study, 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 practice. It took me like a year, you know, of really practicing and, and studying, like, you know, working and, and, and doing stuff. And I was really, really engaged in it. And eventually it became really good. And, and in fact, one of the best. And so, and I was 36, and so 36 years old and 35 years old. And so I was in Aspen. I got a really good job at the Little Nell. And the Little Nell is a really, really high-end restaurant out there. It's a, it's a, it's a five-star, five-diamond. So I learned all about cuisine there. I learned all about wines. I mean, they had they had an inventory of a million dollars worth of wine in the basement. So I learned all about Montrachet, all everything. So that was a great experience. And then from there, I came back home to 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 work with my dad because he had gotten cancer. He got sick, and that was in 2007. My mom wanted to go be close to her family, and my dad knew he was going to die. I didn't know he was going to die, but he knew he was going to die. They knew he was going to die. They didn't tell me. They said, hey, can you just run the store while we're down here? And I said, sure, no problem. I thought it'd be a couple weeks, turn a couple months, turn into four years. And and eventually he died with me, you know, closing the store down, I mean, ending it. You know, it was weird. Timing is very, very interesting. You know, I sold the store, sold the business, and then he died. And that was in 2011. And mind you, this whole time, I'm still struggling with this depression. Um, when you catch, I'm very distracted with the business, I'm very distracted bartending, I'm very distracted in, in Aspen, I'm very distracted moving around, I'm very distracted with my dad's sickness, I'm very distracted with a girlfriend I was dating that was just dating me for the money, I was very distracted with the business and all the things that go wrong with running a retail business. In fact, I opened a second business, I expanded. So I was very, very, very busy, but in between when I wasn't busy, I was depressed. And that turned to a lot of bitterness, and a lot of depression, a lot of anger. Oh, the fan came on. I got to turn this down. Cool. Sorry about that. Blowing you guys out there with the fan. So this was like, you know, so I'm running the business. I have, you know, I have this girlfriend, you know, she's kind of a hoochie mama. You know, my friends are making fun of me a little bit. She drinks a lot. And anyway, she's bulimic and she's vomiting all the time. Anyways, but I have this really nice condo and I'm kind of living what would appear to be the high life. You know, because I'm living downtown Portland, Oregon. I'm living in a condo. I've got a business out in Westland. I've got a business downstairs. You know, it appears that things are going very, very good on the outside. 
But on the inside, I am very, 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 very depressed. So by the time 2011 comes around, and this is September 6th, so this would be 10 years ago, my dad dies. A friend of a friend, you know, this girl, she's taking care of me, she's driving me around, and, um, and, and she's crazy, in a sense, but she says that I'm depressed. And it's the first time I'd ever heard that. And of course I didn't accept it, I was like, She's crazy. I knew I had issues. I knew I had problems. I thought my problems were that I drank too much, that I did too much cocaine, that I thought my problems were like addicts, like the symptoms. I thought my problems were the uh, symptoms of what was happening. I didn't realize that I was actually depressed, and that was the issue. And until I dealt with the depression, I could deal with the symptoms all I wanted. I could deal with the, the obesity. I could deal with you know, drinking too much, I could deal with doing too much cocaine, or doing any cocaine. I could deal with those things all I wanted, but, but until I dealt with the depression, it was just gonna manifest itself in different ways. That's why, that's why I stopped working. So after 2011, my dad dies. Sell the business, I had a website, I sold that, I had some cash, I meet Jedi Joy, but she's depressed and we get together, and we just, it's like that Mickey Rourke movie, Barfly, I'm like, she's my Faye Dunaway, and I'm like, Man, I'm just gonna sit around and drink with her and party with her, and we're gonna take my money. We're gonna go to Panama, and that was it. I wasn't planning on coming back ever. I didn't plan on coming back. I went to Panama. And I figured we'd just go there, and when when things ran out or whatever, I don't know. You know, just point is, is that it wasn't a good good space. But in 2012, we're floating around, and it's the end of the world. In 2013, we're in in Panama. We stayed past our visa. We weren't coming back. I don't know. It's like we just decided that maybe we should come back. And I thought, hey, that's a great idea. Let's go to Vegas and we'll just eat some really good buffets and gamble and drink some free booze. So in 2013, Jedi Joy and I moved to Las Vegas with the plan on dying. I didn't bother to get an ID. I didn't bother to get a driver's license. And I just didn't feel, feel the need to unless I needed it. And you know, eventually I needed an ID, of course, of some sort. So I got a local ID. And, but I had no need to get a driver's license. I just didn't want to get back engaged in anything. I liked being completely off the grid. That was fine with me. And that was like 2015 and we were just cruising along. And, and then 2016 happened. And what happened was, is that Nevada legalized marijuana. I thought to myself, hey, you know, I'm just kind of sitting here doing nothing anyway. It's just wasting the days away. Why not smoke some weed while I, while I waste away watching Judge Judy? It might make it more interesting for me. My intent was to get high, to get stoned, to get blasted, to kind of check out. But what happened was, it actually cured my depression. It was it was an accident. I was smoking it, and I was smoking a lot of it. But slowly, my after about a year, it was slowly my depression started easing off, and I started coming out of it. In two years, and then longer, and then here we are. That was 2016, and I would say by 2019, I was pretty much getting through it. Um, but now in 2021. I can look back and clearly say that I was depressed, I had trauma, and now I've made it through it. If I hadn't started smoking weed, that I might be, I would definitely be obese today. I'd be overweight and unhealthy today. I would not be sane. Like the way I was, I was very afraid of everything. So I was, I was afraid to live, I was afraid to die. So if that makes any sense. I would get mad enough that I would want to destroy everything, including myself. It was very important for me to get through some of these, some of these anger issues, for me to get through with my life. Anyways, I've kind of that's kind of the story. I mean, that's it. That's why I haven't worked. So it's been about since 2011. I haven't worked because I was depressed. I mean, before that, I wasn't working in banking because you know I couldn't fly. And now I'm coming out of my depression, and here I am in New York City, and I feel a lot better. But now the issue is, you know, I've got a 10-year Lip on my tw you know twenty year from from sales basically because I don't I don't know if bartending and running a hardware store counts in corporate America for anything, you know so those are all just life experiences. But as far as sales, I mean I'm very good at it, you know so that's something that I'm very confident I can do. The issue is like you know how do I get from point A to point B? Then the other issue is this is that Jedi Joy she's concerned that there's nothing that I can do which. We got a little bit of argue, like I said, about me getting a job like, through, but I think it's important that I'm available. I, I'm here because I'm not dead. <laughs> I thought I was, but now I'm not. And 
and I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot. I've learned a lot about how the world works. I've learned a lot about people. Not just, not just rich people. Not just people you work with, but all people, all the way down. Like, I know those people. I know their names. They know my name. We've shared smokes together. You know, I've got to know people. I've served drinks to drunks, rich and poor. I've, I, so I've seen a lot. I get to know people, and that's really good. The other thing is, is that I know that people want to be healthy, that they feel better when they're fit and thin. And I learned how to lose weight. I learned how to be fit just by changing the diet, by not, by controlling what you eat, by not eating certain foods. Right now I'm feeling a little chubby because over the weekend I had chicken. Chicken's one of those foods that's, that's, well, it doesn't sit right with humans for some reason. It makes you, it's kind of attaches to you. Anyways, this isn't a diet one, that, that's another uh, blog. This one is about like, yeah, why, why, was, why doesn't Jedi Rich work? So it's been 10 years, and, um, you know, I mean, I know there's a lot of people out there that, especially the laborers or maybe maybe some people, well, just go out there and get a job and, you know, you go out there and try, you know, punch a clock for a minute. Well, yeah, yeah, could do that. You know, and I've, and I've done that and I have no problem doing that. Uh, it's just the phase of my life right now is that I need something that's a little more interesting that would utilize the skill sets that I have today. But otherwise, I'll be right in the same boat I was 20 years ago where I'm, you know, punching a clock making money. It doesn't matter how much money I'm making or how little, but I'll go back to that cycle where I'm just going to be waiting to die again. And I don't want to do that. I want to keep living. I want to be where I was at before 9-11, but better, you know, better, better than before. And that's what this blog's about. So what I'm doing right now is, you know, I applied to two, two jobs today. Uh, I believe it or not, I applied with uh, Leafly. They're looking for an account executive, someone to do some sales. I think I could probably do that in the Northeast here in New York. And I also applied with Weed Maps, also looking for a New York, uh, New York Northeast sales rep. And that's something that I could do. I, I, I know cannabis fairly well, and what I don't know, I certainly could learn. And it's something I'm passionate about because it saved my life. It helped me to get better. I would have no problem going out and doing something in the cannabis industry at a high level, at a business to business level, working to get people, you know, I don't know, whatever it is. I'm, I'm kind of open to a lot of different ideas. So for now, that's, I don't know, I feel like I, I need to explain myself more because, you know, it has been a, a while, but it, I guess if there's any questions, just leave them down below in the comments and, and I'd be happy to discuss and we'll do some live stuff too. I haven't done it live in a minute, but we'll get back to that. So. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, oh, uh, please go ahead and subscribe, or don't. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. I'm not really into the views or subscribes anymore. I don't know if you guys picked up on that. But uh, anyways, thank you. Not to death. I'm not impressed. I'm not amused. I'm not confused. I'm not to do. I'm a grown man business. I am not in school. Put your hand down, youngin. This is not for you. I'm a jail, my beat with the Kanye yo. Name on the marquee, your name off the payroll. Style fresh, like I'm still a day yo, and it's been like that since the day yo. On more time than a Rolex or Seiko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get up or get out, get down or lay low. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out. Check it out. Check it out. Slim Jedi. Cast a big shadow. Cherokee red to shoot the long arrow. Got more skill, more aim, and more ammo. You can get it all from a big or small barrel like Hail Mary. I pull out the ace from the jungles of the Empire State where there ain't no escape. Two, four, seven. Seven, one, eight, and that's like every night, every day. From the place that I settle and say to the states, I'm collecting my pay. Last off, and I'm back in the cave. Hold it down for my family straight. Represent in a family way. Being Ross is an amateur state before the press and the cameras raised. Like a long time man of the way, we want to stand in the street. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Excellence. And that's what it is, you see.